we are the covenant people. We are the ones, Zion, in covenant with Abba Yah. It's us. We are in a blood covenant. And that covenant was established between us and Yah several times and reestablished several times between Abba Yah and our ancestors, Zion. Those of you who are bloodline descendants of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, we trace our bloodline lineage to the original man, Adam. And we studied at our last meditation how Adam is in a blood covenant with Abba Yah, the forked tongue consulted, consulted Hasatan, spoke to Grandmama Chihuahua concerning the fruit that was forbidden. Y'all know the story and the covenant was broke. And then Abba Yah moved on behalf of Chihuahua and Adam and slay the lamb. Covered grandmama and grandpa. But then the wickedness that had been unleashed on the planet uh, was remarkable until According to the Holy Manuscript, there was only evil thoughts continuously when these fallen demons that we proved on our last video had somehow mingled with the daughters of men and created a society of giants that became men of renown and pushed a satanic way of thinking on the whole planet, on the whole earth, on the whole world, until every thought was only evil continuously, until Abba said it repented of him that he even made man. And so, hallelujah, our grandfather Noah found him in the sight of Abba and was spared by Abba Yah being able to share with him his plan for humanity and how he would extend his mercy and grace to this old crazy world by allowing Grandpa to build an ark that would save him through the flood. And we showed you on last time that he went into covenant with Noah and we saw that the token of the covenant was he said, I'm going to set my bow up there. Every time it rained, I set my bow up there. Y'all be able to see it. And I showed you in no uncertain terms on last video that the bow represented the weapon used by Abba Yah to destroy this earth with the flood waters from beneath and the flood waters from above. So Zion, Yah then enters into covenant with Noah. And the covenant is obviously once again um, ratified in blood. Sacrifices are made. And Yah, he uh, blesses Noah and his sons. Now today, um, I was going to talk to you about um, the next covenant, which is the Abrahamic covenant, because we've already talked about that a little bit. And then I was going to 
go to the next one. But the most high wanted me to bring this out. And I said, I'm going to do because every if he prompts me to do something, Zion, I feel like that's what I need to be doing, period. So it, no matter what my plans are, I'm his and I'm a tool and he can play me any kind of way he would like. I'm an instrument. He's the master. Uh, I'm the potter. He's the clay. And so he put on my heart to tell you all something about this breaking of the covenant that happened because each time there is a covenant made with our ancestors, somebody comes along and violates the covenant, which then necessitates another covenant, another covenant, and another covenant until um, we end up, of course, with the greatest covenant. And remember, each covenant builds on the others until, of course, um, we see that Hamashiach, he says of, him, of himself that he is the new covenant, that this is a token, his blood. And it's, that's why we celebrate Pesach, Passover, not with our focus on uh, lamb's blood from African Egypt and bondage. But when we celebrate Passover, we are looking at the, pass, the Passover and seeing how Hamashiach fulfills the role, fulfills the type of the Passover completely. So we keep the feast. <clears throat> um, but I want to share something today that he put on my heart. And then I'm going to put it on your heart so you can think about these things. I want to talk about how the no, how Noah's covenant, the, the Noah covenant was broken. And um, they use fancy terms like Noahide laws and all that. But I want to show you how this covenant was actually broken in the next few minutes that we have together. Watch this. The reason why this is important, I'll show it to you in a second. But I want you to see something here. If you have your Bible, of course, always have a Bible with you and some type of way you can do the research. Please don't just uh, listen to the moray. And take it. And let's not fall back into our old habits. Let's be studious, Zion. So if you go to Genesis and you go to chapter um, 9 and verse 17, where we left off, you will see it says, And Yah said unto Noah, This is the token of the covenant which I have established between me and all flesh that is upon the earth. What is? Of course, the covenant would be the covenant of uh, when he said um, he's not going to destroy the earth anymore. You cannot drink blood from animals and you can now commit no murder. There will be no, quote unquote, black on black crime. And that was out. So part of our covenant relationship with him um, that we were to walk according to his laws, statutes and commandments. Once again, that's it's going to always come back to that. Um, but we see something that happened here. We see the breaking of the covenant. And so, um, the first thing I want to, I want to point out in this video is I want to point out number one, that Shem, Ham, and Yepheth all knew about the covenant. Yes, we're going to prove it. And the sons of Noah that went forth of the ark were Shem and Ham and Japheth. And Ham is the father of Canaan. Wait, what? <laughs> so we, Ham is the father of Canaan. Yes. We're going we're gonna to hear a lot about Canaan. We're going to hear a lot about Canaanites. We're going to hear things like Canaanite-ish for the rest of this book. So we need to know who, who the Canaanites, according to the Bible. These are descendants of Ham. Study that. You find out it's dark races. We'll get to that later. But these are black people. All right. And Noah began to be a husbandman. Yes, a farmer planting vineyards. And he planted a vineyard and he drank of the wine and was drunken. 
and he was uncovered in his tent. And Ham, the father of Canaan, saw the nakedness of his, of his father and told his two brethren without. So what do we see here? Number one, we see that Ham is already showing a lack of reverence for Noah. His own father. Let me move on. My light is disappearing. His own father. You see the scenario? His father was drinking his own wine in his own tent, was full of wine and fell asleep in the tent uncovered. Ham comes by and sees his father and goes to tell his brothers and leaves his father uncovered. Leaves his father exposed. Most likely he's, he's, uh, there's mockery going on. Most, most likely he's like, oh, you should go see that. And that disrespect and dishonor, not only to his father, but to the man Yah used, the preacher and the prophet Yah used to save the whole world, including him, was a level of disrespect. That could not be overlooked. We see something in him that ain't right. I want you to get that in your head. We see something in him that ain't right. I was sharing this with a hula and I talked to a couple other people. And we were mentioning something like, man, if you see your parent. Um, laying on the floor, uncovered in the house or in a room. Uh, you know what the first thing a normal thinking person does? You go grab something like a cover and you cover them. You don't you don't start snickling and cracking jokes and then go run and tell your brother, hey y'all, hey man, pop man, he just man, look at him, man, he all no, oh, oh, that's not what you do. A normal thinking person, that don't even come in their mind. A normal thinking person would just simply cover up their father. And if it's like a modern day situation where someone lays out in the living room, you'll probably carry that person to their room. Put them in the bed, cover them up and go on. And it'll never, it, it'll never become any type of nothing because a normal thinking person doesn't do what Ham did. And um, before some of you uh, start talking about what he did to, to Noah, stop the lie about that sex thing because that's not what happened. Believe me, if Ham would have tried to have sex with his daddy while he was drunk, they would have killed him. There would have been no, no, he would have been dead, de dead. And daddy right now, I know of if they son, if they son try to jump on him while they've been drinking and have sex with him, boy, it ain't no, it ain't a father they I know of. Ain't gonna kill that Negro dead. So let's stop all that foolishness that come up out of, that come up out of a whole lot of uh, other writings. That's not what the text says. Because the, the picture here is dishonor. So he goes and tells his brother. And I don't know what he thinks his brethren are going to do. Are they going to dishonor their father? But no, they don't. What do they do? They honor the father. They honor their father Noah and Yah's man and Yah's preacher so much that they put, they put a claw, a covering on their shoulders and and went to the tent walking backwards so as not to dishonor their father and to dishonor the very man and prophet that Yah has used to literally save the whole world. 
and and they then cover their their father. That is Genesis chapter nine. And Ham, the father of Canaan, saw the nakedness of his father, verse 22, and told his two brethren without. And Shem and Japheth took a garment and laid it upon both their shoulders and went backward and covered the nakedness of their father. And their faces were backward and they saw not their father's nakedness. So we see here in this short video, the beginning of the breaking of the covenant. And we see here that some of the wickedness that existed pre-deluge, deluge, pre-flood, made it through the boat ride, <laughs> made it through the flood. And it's, Ham, it's in Ham primarily. In the next video, we're going to explore this a little deeper. Shalom, Zion.